Tarzan of the Apes, from the novels by Edgar Rice Burroughs with Mr. James H. Pierce as Tarzan and Miss Joanne Burroughs as Jane Porter. Professor Porter and his party, searching for his daughter Jane, are captured by cannibals and are forced to undergo the native trial by poison. Tarzan rescues Jane from a leopard, and Jane, remembering a revolver at the hut, has Tarzan take her to the little cabin built by Lord Greystoke. Jane gets the revolver, and together she and Tarzan return to the jungle. You remember the last we heard from Professor Porter and his party. They were about to drink the poison prepared by the witch doctor. Now, are you ready? Hold your breath. Flimsy drifting curtains of opaque mist shroud the tops of the jungle trees. The hard, bright rays of the tropic sun, softened by the haze, play about the moss-strewn floor in pools of liquid light. A languid air, almost an air of peace, pervades the entire jungle. Even Numa, the lion, fed and rested, lies asleep in the sanded depths of his shady lair. From the dense foliage that hides the sapphire sky comes a mixed chorus of shrill chirping. Below the canopy of green, on the platform of branches, sit Jane Porter and Tarzan. Through half-closed eyes, Tarzan watches the jungle trail. Jane looks into the cool depths below and thinks about the events of the past few weeks. In her own mind, she's satisfied that her father and his party have not left the jungle, and despite its present quiet, Jane knows that underneath, the jungle is still savage, fierce, relentless. She turns to Tarzan. Sometimes, White Skin, it's almost impossible to realize that the jungle can be so terrible. Look at it now. Beautiful. The air is heavy with the fragrance of orchids. At home, these same flowers would cost thousands of dollars. Here, they grow wild on every hand. Tarzan nods his head. In a short time, he has learned much of this strange new language. Often there are words he cannot understand, but he can grasp their meaning. He looks at Jane. Yes, Jane. Jungle beautiful. Jungle beautiful. Jane, no more frightened. Yes, White Skin, you are right. But when night comes, and the lions, the leopards, all these fierce brutes are on the prowl, I'm afraid. I'm afraid. I can't help it. Jane got gun. No more frightened. That's true, White Skin. The gun does help. But still, this jungle is hardly the place for a woman, even if she has a gun. Of course, it's foolish for me to expect you to understand that, since I suppose you have been in this jungle all your life. Jungle, same as many jungles. That's just it, White Skin. You put it briefly, but very much to the point. The jungle is the jungle and won't change. As long as I am with you, I'm safe. But what about Daddy, Mr. Philander, Cecil, out there looking for me? Cecil? Cecil? Oh, of course. Stupid of me. You don't know Cecil. Father, out in jungle, no more white skin. Jungle kill, Father. No kill. Jungle no kill. Father got gun. But white skin, you don't know Father. Just when he's most liable to need a gun, then is when he will most certainly forget it. Tarzan does not quite know what to make of Jane's statement. However, he's been turning over in his mind a thought. Now, if he can only express it in words, Jane will understand. Jane, Father, go Gomangani hut. Father, go man hut. Gomangani hut? Father, go. You mean that Father might be at the cannibal village? Village? Village. Many hut. Yes, nightman village. Nightman? Yes, white skin, day man. Jane, day woman. Gomangani, nightman. Gomangani, nightman. Oh, black. Night is black, I see. Black man, white skin. Gormangani, black man. Father, go many hut. Village, black man. You may be right, white skin. And if he has... <laughs> Jane's thought and speech are interrupted by the arrival of Tog, one of the great apes of the tribe of Kerchak. The hairy monster swings from the overhanging branches onto the platform and talks to Tarzan. <laughs> Kerchak, Kumla, Dak. White skin, meet Dum Dum. Come back quick. Oh, White skin, I, I hate to be left, even if things are quiet. She ain't no frightened. White skin talk, Tog. Tog, stop. You mean Tog will stay here with me? Yes. Tog, Thunder. <laughs> All right, but White Skin, come back quickly. And Tarzan nods his head as he, as he swings off into the trees in the direction of the Dum Dum, where a disagreement between two bull apes awaits his solution. In the cannibal kraal, Professor Porter has just lowered the gourd of poisoned liquid from his lips. There's a strained half-question and expression in his eyes. 
The others, Clayton, Melander, Darno, are watching him in tense, nervous silence. And the witch doctor says you are the next, Monsieur Clayton. Give me the stuff, Professor. Let's get this over. It's getting on my nerves. Hello. Am I? To me, I shall drink. Black vile, Jerry. Here, Monsieur Pilon, there. It smells like uh, sulfurated hydrogen. It tastes worse. Now, I'm uh, him shy. Professor Porter hands the half-empty gourd to the witch doctor. The witch doctor takes the gourd, and with an evil smile twisting his grotesque features, he drinks. I do. He's drinking. The heart of poison. Do not be too sure of that, monsieur. Uh, do not be alarmed. I do not think it's deadly. I'm not. If the witch doctor can drink it, I can. But I, I, I feel slightly jaisomay. Uh, I want to go to sleep. Oh, yes, that stuff uh, has that effect, Darno. You must uh, control your faculties. Do not permit that feeling of sleep to overcome you. Keep moving. Keep moving. If you do fall asleep, nothing can save you. Professor, can you take more poison? Uh, why, yes, Zalando, if it's necessary. I have a scheme in mind. Darno, ask for a second good. But, monsieur... Do as I ask. We'll finish this witch doctor once for all. But, yes. Not aware. Pass the chai. I shall drink last. You don't have to drink much this time. The native hands the freshly filled gourd to Professor Porter. Every eye is fixed on the group as the professor pretends to take a long drink. He passes the gourd to Clayton, and the Englishman, hiding a grimace behind the uplifted gourd, drinks. Darno takes the poison from Clayton, drinks, and passes it to Philander. As Philander lowers the gourd from his lips, he drops something into the liquid. Now he hands it to the witch doctor. The horrible-looking figure raises the gourd in his scraggy, twisted hands. A reddish-yellow foam bubbles up in the gourd. It runs down the sides. The witch doctor stares at it aghast. He looks at Professor Porter, then holds the gourd out to the native who bought it. The blacks insist that he drink, monsieur. What did you do for that? Two tablets, nothing dangerous. I take one occasionally from a headache. Half a dozen will have this witch doctor and have an immediate effect on him right away. The witch doctor is frightened out of his wit. And the natives are apparently insisting that he drink. The paint daubed medicine man glares vengefully at the yelling natives, then at Professor Porter. At last, with an effort, he raises the gourd and drinks. <laughs> with a shriek, he throws the thing from him. His black lips are streaked with yellowish foam, and he throws himself to the ground, groveling. <laughs> Before he finds out that he's not going to die, tell the people that we will cure him. Let's pick him up and carry him to our hut. Uh, yes, yes, we don't want him to recover in front of the natives. Yes, then make quite a ceremony carrying him to his hut. Now we can bring this black gentleman to our turn. Is that altogether safe, Professor? Uh, I think so, Clayton. He evidently thinks that he's going to die, so it's natural that he'll agree to our terms. But, Monsieur, what are our terms? Getting us out of this confounded village. Isn't that a little too fast? It can't be too fast for me. I don't see how anyone could possibly want to linger. Perfectly true, Clayton. But if we can inveigle these natives into helping us find Jane, that would be the best solution, would it not? By Jove, I see. That's an idea. And also, since we are embarked on a campaign of deceit, we might as well do it properly. Now, no, monsieur, uh, do you not think that in order to impress our native friends further, we should in the future be able to tell exactly what it is they want? I do not understand, monsieur. I simply mean, if the witch doctor will tell us beforehand what is required by the tribe, then we can forestall their asking and do what they require, insofar as they know, because of our second sight. I can tell you now what their main complaint is. Oh, yes, what, is, is what is it? It is rain! They have been through a lengthy period of doubt. And that, for our first problem, seems to be quite a facer. Yes, I don't believe that even we can make rain for them. No, monsieur, but if you will handle the necessary ceremonies, I can tell when you may expect the rain. Oh, oh, how do you mean? Of course, with my accoutrement. In the other hut is my compass, which contains also a barometer. Uh, I say, the spider seems to be coming to his attention. Yes, then we had better start about exacting the required promises.
While Professor Porter and his party work over the now thoroughly frightened witch doctor, Jane Porter sits on the platform in the trees, watching Tog, the ape left by Tarzan to guard her, as he hunts for beetles at the base of the trees. Tog looks up when he hears Jane call his name. That this white hairless she should be able to call him by name does not surprise him, but that she does not understand him, nor help him search for the grubs he considers delicacies, that's something he cannot understand. <laughs> Again, Tog looks up. A sinuous, mottled length whips itself from the surrounding green and twines itself about Tog's oh. massive shoulders. Will his other snake kill Tog? What will happen to Jane during Tarzan's absence? 